Morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. We're seeing gold up about $40. You know, volume's been very light since really Thursday, basically due to the arrival of the hurricane and now the damage of the hurricane and heading into Labor Day and heading into the end of the month uh, uh, settling of books and accounts. So uh, we're not sure about our direction for today. We know the long-term direction over the next 60, 90 days is upward. Uh, so gold trading about 1840. We're also seeing uh, a demand expected to rise 25% through the Indian gold buying season, the feast, excuse me, the festival of Diwali. Okay, uh, this is also, as we indicated, the end of Ramadan and a period of great buying. And we want to remind you that in most of the world, gold is not just jewelry. One of the consistent themes of the naysayers about gold is that jewelry purchases are meaningless. In most parts of the world, jewelry purchases are simply portable wealth. Portable wealth. It's not like the jet setter paying a quarter of a million bucks for a watch. It's a guy taking $25,000 in jewelry for his wife so that if they need to get across a border, or if their economy crashes, they've got some means of surviving as a family. So we need to think of jewelry not simply as an adornment. Secondly, we are quite concerned about the trend in South Africa. Now, this is an issue that you will see occurring, this issue of nationalizing mines. Now, in theory, Malima, who is the head of the youth wing of the ANC in South Africa, who has been leader a leader in the nationalization call. Remember, one mine in, that, in South Africa has already been nationalized. Malima wants to see nationalization of mines. And he was to be expelled today or suspended from the ANC or sent out into the political wilderness. But now there are riots going on, so we don't know what the judgment of the ANC will be today. Um, but we do know that in a society like South Africa, where... The, the, the difference between the rich and the poor is the difference between the rich and the poor. Now there's a bunch of rich black people. 25 years ago, there weren't any rich black people. Now there are rich black people, and they're behaving the same way rich people behave everywhere. They're having a great time for themselves. The problem is in South Africa, 95% of the black people live in the identical conditions of squalor that they had under apartheid. This is a tremendous social problem. And Zuma and his gang, and remember his son has already is already under suspicion for, for appropriating mining licenses and blackmailing mining operators, uh, clearly does not have the depth of vision to, uh, to confront this issue. So we're, if, if I was a mining operator in South Africa, I'd be real concerned, and I'm sure that they are. Uh, in addition, uh, with the I hate to mention Venezuela, you know Venezuela is on a nationalizing trend as well. Now, what this means is, as governments become more desperate, they're going to nationalize, and what it also means is that prices are going to go up. Remember, South Africa is already in the position of the degradation of ore. In other words, they're having to dig deeper and they're getting lower quality oil, ore, okay? Now, what that means is that their mining costs are going up, and that in turn means people, I'm sure, already are looking for alternatives to the mining uh, infrastructure that they have in South Africa. Uh, I honestly believe that the ANC has some extraordinarily difficult, difficult problems, uh, and uh, on, the, on the one hand, their trend to their their interest in nationalizing may increase. On the other hand, that would put them make South Africa once again a pariah in the larger universe, and their world would collapse. So I don't know which way the wind is blowing. I'm just telling you that 95 percent of the vast majority of black populations' lives have not improved one economic jot or tittle. Freedom, terrific. Yes, very good. Wonderful. But they have no money and their kids have no hope. So this is Arnie Waters. Be careful trading. The long term is great. Short term might be real choppy. The damage to the New York suburbs and New Jersey suburbs uh, where many, many, many Wall Street people live uh, has been tremendous. And, and it, 
it, and it's it's amazing that so few people lost their lives. So if you're safe today and your power is on today, whether you're in Massachusetts or New York or whatever, you know, just uh, give a positive thought to those who are still suffering from this horrible storm. So this is Arnie Waters. Watch out for the South Africans. Aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Thanks.